Well, we're all in our places, and I see a lot of happy smiles. Uh, thank you so very much. I have, um, I love this. I love it when we get together with the veterans. Uh, we've been doing these Veterans Advisory Board for, well, 12 years now. 12 years since I've been in Congress. Uh, John Valier is here. Uh, when he was my uh, district director, he said, this is something we're going to do. And uh, I love it. Because all of you uh, in this room, in one way or another, either as an active duty uh, participant in one or another of the services or a spouse, uh, you've spent uh, almost your entire life, your entire working life, serving this country. And uh, in almost every case, it's in a different, difficult circumstance. Um, I suspect everybody in this room at one point or another served in one of the active military engagements that the United States has had. Because we've had one almost the entire period of time from, well, I guess we can start back with World War II. And it just keep coming forward. World War II, Korea, Vietnam was almost immediately, in fact, some of it never really transitioned between the two. And then on beyond that, there was a quiet period there following Vietnam, but that didn't last, I think, about a decade. And then, once again, back into it. We're talking about Gulf One. Uh, we were sharing that just a moment ago, and uh, all of you, do you mind if I do something? Um, Let's go back through that period of time. I don't know if any of you were involved in the Korea War here, if you were. It's very difficult. World War II, I think one of the last veterans of World War II passed here not so long ago. Uh, there's still a, a few, a very, very few around. I know my dad passed, boy, that was uh, in the early 90s. But, um, so, Korea, Vietnam. Yeah, that's the, the big one. I'm going to do something with Vietnam veterans here in just a few moments. Uh, I notice there's a few Coasties here today. <laughs> and uh, normally when we uh, call out these, they don't raise their hand. However, in every one of these engagements, the Coast Guards played a major role. Uh, and not on the sidelines. Let's see, what did I go? Vietnam. What would be next? Gulf One? Uh, there you go. Gulf two, three, four, <laughs> all the way through. So how many years at the Gulf? Um, I spent, um, I was on the Abraham Lincoln in Iraq, and then um, I also went to Afghanistan for about eight months. So those were the mid, the early 2000s? Yes, sir. Probably two through? 2003 to 2007, pretty much. Yeah. Anybody else in, in uh, Iraq? Well, Desert Shield, Desert Storm, sir. Desert Storm, I've heard of that. Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and then, of course, all the way to Iraq, Afghanistan, yeah. Kuwait, The real Saudi. combat was when you were my chief. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else on, on the Gulf? Uh, one, two, three. Still ongoing. Yes. Nestor, what did, what did you serve? Well, I was in the Marine Corps from 74 to 76, and the Army from 76 to <coughs> 2008. So, all those wars in between. <laughs> wow, amazing, absolutely amazing service. Um, I guess that kind of can bring us right up to now. You take, you take the Middle East, Afghanistan, and uh, Iraq. You really have covered everything from, what, 92, 91, all the way up to the present time. And now we've got uh, this uh, incredible uh, challenge out ahead of us. I just came back from uh, the Pacific. Uh, time in uh, Taiwan and Cambodia and the Philippines, a um, few hours on Guam. Uh, the Pacific is a very, very serious challenge for America uh, and each one of those countries. A lot of really profoundly important issues. Uh, China's uh, 
Every, every study indicates that China is the competition now and will be for some while ahead of us. So when I was in uh, Taiwan about a week ago now, um, they're very heavily squeezed by China. And it wasn't just the visit, Pelosi visit or our visit. Uh, China's been building up the pressure on Taiwan, well, for some 40 some years, well, actually more than that, but uh, 70 years. But really building that pressure much more now. And uh, obviously, very, very serious. We'll see. I don't think we're going to go to war there. We're certainly going to be supporting Taiwan uh, militarily, economically. And we're very, we, really the entire world's heavily dependent on Taiwan. That's where the uh, integrated circuits, the uh, chips, about 90% of the most important chips are produced by Taiwan and in Taiwan. The uh, everyday chips are produced by Taiwan in China. So uh, Taiwan becomes extremely important for many, many reasons. Any of you uh, serve in the Philippines at all? Pass through the Philippines. Pass through. I was in Taiwan too. In the 70s, they were lobbing rockets off the street, even <coughs> back then. In the seven, into into the uh, into the island itself. Well, they weren't hitting the islands. It was a harassment. Yeah. Well, they're certainly doing that today. I don't know if you heard in the back room. We were there in the 70s, and China was launching rockets into or near to right. the island. Well, I remember, any of you remember the uh, Nixon-Kennedy uh, debates? Hey, you youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Nixon-Kennedy debates, one of the debates was all about Kamoi and Matsu. These are two islands just a couple of miles off the coast of uh, China. And the debate was which of those two, Kennedy or Nixon, would stand and and keep China from the PRC from taking over those islands. And that was, that was the principal debate. And that was 1960, 1960. So this is not new. And in fact, over the years, China did take those two islands, which are right off the coast. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. In any case, uh, we're stressed all around. Philippines. Very, very important going forward. I had an opportunity to meet with the, uh, our delegation, met with the new president. Uh, and uh, he is certainly not the past president. Duterte was uh, a personality of his own. Uh, Marcos has a completely different personality. He remains to see where his policies are going to go. But right now he's talking about being very much aligned with the United States and not playing China and the United States off against each other as much as uh, Duterte did. We'll see. Anyway, there's a lot of issues out there, and there's going to be a lot of new veterans coming in. Um, I, I really want to engage with all of you. We've got a program I want to bring up to date on some things. The PAC Act, um, critically important. I'm kind of curious about those of you that served uh, most recently anywhere in the Gulf, any of those period of times from 91 on. Um, the exposure that you had to toxics was virtually everywhere. But that wasn't the only place. A couple of you were raised your hand on Vietnam. Uh, Agent Orange, it took almost 40 years before the VA recognized Agent Orange as being a ubiquitous problem throughout the uh, men and women that served. Some of them on ship, oh, they're a long way from the jungle, yes. But that's where the chemical was put onto the planes and transferred at that point. It actually took a congressional act to make that happen. So the agent always became one of the uh, criteria for uh, veterans military, uh, medical services. We followed that, uh, that up. I had a uh, young, not a young, a major in the Air Force was my military uh, fellow. And uh, we were talking about this issue of exposure to toxics. And what we did was we put in a piece of legislation that is now law. We called it the Oath Act. And the Oath Act required the military, all of the services, including the Coast Guard, 
to keep an accurate record of exposure to any toxic chemical during their service so that that record would be in the record of the individual and someday in the future something turns up a cancer or some other illness can be it might very well be traced back to that exposure that took place 10 20 30 40 years before so that'll carry on into the future and then this year uh, we took on the burn pit legislation like we did uh, several years ago with the uh, Agent Orange. And we simply said, we're not going to force the veterans to try to prove that their illness came from exposure to a burn pit. The assumption is that if you were exposed to a burn pit in any beginning back in Gulf One until today and beyond into the future, your illness is assumed to come from that, and therefore you are, you have available to you the services, the medical services of the Veterans Administration. Um, that piece of legislation had easy sailing through the House, with most of us, uh, leave the politics out, you can read the scorecard yourself. It got to the Senate, and uh, it was going along pretty well in the Senate, and then uh, the Republican senators got mad at something the Democrats were doing and put a stop on it. And then the most awesome lobbying that I have seen in my many, many years took place. And there was an uprising amongst the veterans across the country. And if only wars could be won as fast. <laughs> it was a capitulation within, what, 20 days or so? Uh, I bring that up not to you know, hanging on the Republican senators because they had some issue they wanted to deal with, but rather on the extraordinary uh, coordination of the veterans programs and veterans all across the country. Uh, it didn't take long. But for me, uh, having voted on it in the House, sent it to the Senate, then when it came back to the House, uh, once again, um, being invited to the signing ceremony at the White House, which took place I think it was the 12th of this month. Uh, I had to be back in Washington for the passage of the uh, uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which is a whole lot more than inflation. But anyway, that, uh, so I was back there and I was invited. It was really beautiful. It was really a beautiful ceremony because the, all of the veterans organizations, and particularly those that uh, were most deeply engaged in it, were participating. So it's law. The money is, it's an annual, it's an automatic appropriation, so whatever it's gonna cost, it, that money's gonna be appropriated, same as Medicare, Social Security, just. Sir, uh, you'd asked me earlier, 680 billion over 10 years, what you done? That's a healthy number. Let's see, what's that, 60% of, it, well, it's almost a third of a trillion, it is a third, two thirds of a trillion. Uh, and now, it's there, that's the anticipated expense. If it's less, fine. If it's more, then that money's going to get uh, available to the veterans. We're going to talk about that in a little detail. It's been a, a very uh, interesting period for me, and this is my last comments here. I went to the, I was Lieutenant Governor, I went to uh, Congress in 2009, which some of you remember at that period, you had all of those 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and about uh, at the peak, maybe a couple hundred thousand, 250,000 American soldiers cycling through Afghanistan and uh, Iraq and the, mid, uh, and the Gulf. And they were immediately, as they left, coming into the Veterans Affairs. And the Veterans Affairs was nowhere prepared for it, not even, not even thinking about what would happen and the crunch that was taking place, and all of you were involved in that, as some of you, I think we had, I don't know, I recognize a few faces here that actually go back to 2009 when I uh, went to Congress. And we were having meetings and trying to figure out how to deal with this. And so at that period of time, the ramp up of appropriations for the veterans took place. And in the three, in those 10 years, almost a quadrupling of money for the Veterans Affairs. You go back to 2006 and you look at 
the expense and the money appropriated for the veterans, it's, it's probably somewhere between three and a half to four times greater now. To take into account that extraordinary number of men and women that have gone through these 22 years. Uh, and so they need the services. The PAC Act is in addition to that. And so uh, it didn't happen just because there was a problem. It happened because the veterans and organizations, all of you, you stepped up, you pointed out the problems, the uh, veteran service officers, the veteran service organizations, all of you said, we got these problems, we got to deal with it. And over the period of time, the Veterans Administration had really tough organizational and administrative problems. And you're, you're all aware of that. Probably all of you have dealt with that in one way or another. I know we have uh, the amount of time that we've spent uh, working with veterans who had problems. Uh, Aaron over here, a uh, specialist in that area. Uh, Jackie, you know, we just ramped up trying to keep pace with the concerns that were brought to our attention. And that was a small percentage of the concerns that we dealt with veteran service officers and like. I understand we have a new veteran service office here in the county. Who would be taking that job? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you are. Come on. Oh, thank you, Congressman Garamani. It's my pleasure. <clears throat> my pleasure. You've been around a little while. Introduce yourself. Give us your background. You and I chatted a little bit about this. Toxic exposure and the like. Uh, thank you, team. I, I know a lot of uh, the veterans in the crowd. Uh, I'm also a, a local veteran, a combat veteran, first Gulf War. Uh, when they talk about the burn pits, uh, I was one of the early veterans who registered for the burn pits. Uh, you guys know it was a pretty interesting uh, experience out there during the first Gulf War when it comes to exposure to toxins. A lot of people don't know it wasn't just the burn pits that we were exposed to, but uh, the, the Iraqis actually set a bunch of oil wells on fire when we went through Kuwait. And I remember because my Humvee got covered with oil, right? And it, they never washed that stuff off until we got back to Germany. So there is a, a lot of things that soldiers, Marines, uh, airmen, uh, sailors are exposed to that people back here uh, stateside aren't aware of. So we are really, really thankful to uh, Congressman Garamundi, to our uh, fellow veterans for making sure they got this PACT Act through. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about was a little bit about the PACT Act. I know I put a, uh, a cheat sheet on everybody's uh, seat with the most frequently asked questions for the PACT Act. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me, uh, I mentioned it to Congressman Garamundi, was that for our Vietnam veterans, I saw a lot of hands go up when he said Vietnam. They added hypertension as a presumptive for uh, Agent Orange for Vietnam veterans. Uh, I, my phone's been ringing off the hook about hypertension because as you got- None of us are stressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, life, life causes a lot of stress. But for our Vietnam veterans, man, you guys deserve this. We, we all are uh, sad that it took so long for some of these things to get recognized. But now that it is recognized, we wanna get everybody in the door and applying for these benefits. Uh, I met with Sergio Chow, the uh, director of the regional office of Oakland, and he said that he wants our veterans, even though they're not going to start processing claims for, uh, for uh, the PACT Act until 2003, he wants us to get those claims in now because uh, he's ordered all of his reviewers to look for reasons to uh, get our veterans qualified uh, if they already exist. So if you have hypertension and it's connected to the PACT Act, but it's also connected to something else that might have been in your service. They're gonna go out of their way to get that connection made before uh, 2023. So please, please uh, get in there and uh, apply for the PACT Act. Uh, another thing I wanted to say before I get off of the stage is uh, I get a lot of questions about transportation for our veterans. Uh, we all know as veterans who get uh, care here in uh, Solano County that we get our care from all different VA medical facilities. So I may go to the Palo Alto Medical Facility for some specialty care. I may go to San Francisco to get surgery on my arm, or I may go to VA NorCal, uh, Martinez, uh, Sacramento, or here in Solano County to get care. The uh, transportation agency is making it really easy for our veterans to uh, get transportation. If you, if you, uh, one of the other cheat sheets I threw up there was the subsidized transportation for our veterans cheat sheet. Uh, 
as you guys know, gas prices are ridiculous. Uh, they are coming down, but still really tough for some of our guys to uh, get to their appointment. Please tell your veterans, if you're uh, members of the uh, service organizations, please tell your veterans about that program. It's a great program, and I want to make sure our veterans are taking advantage of all the resources that they have available to them. Uh, thank you guys for giving me a little time. Uh, thank you, Congressman Gary Money, for giving me a little time up there. If you guys have any questions, you uh, let me know. I also brought my computer with me if you need me to log on and uh, get you any information or give, give you any help. Uh, thank you guys for all you do for our community. We live in a great, great veteran slash military friendly community, and uh, I feel blessed, and I know you guys all do too. Al, you're not leaving. Oh. <laughs> you, you see, I try to talk fast. This, get is, out fast. this is the question part of your time. Right? <laughs> now, you're not asking the questions. Anybody have questions that you want to take up here? I, I've got, yeah, go for yes, it. Yes, Congressman Governmenti, Nestor Galigo from Vallejo. One of our main concerns is that the backlog <clears throat> that's going to be inundating the VA. Uh, four years ago, we tried to put the uh, Commitment to Veterans and Support Outreach, Outreach Act, which is to fund the county veteran service officers more money, as well as to the veteran service organizations more funding so that they can help the VA process all of these incoming claims. Uh, we would really, really appreciate it if somehow we can fund more money to the CVSOs, County Veterans Officers, because you know they're not funded by the federal government. They're all state, state general fund and county general fund, and as well as the American Legion, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, otherwise known as the Big Three, because they can help the VA with this tremendous amount of uh, claims coming in. Well, Nestor, you're certainly correct about the number of claims. Uh, I would expect that uh, almost anybody that served in that period of time uh, and going and into the future have a potential claim. I was just looking at some of the detail here in the notes my recollection is when the bill passed the House, we anticipated the increase in claims and provided a substantial amount of money for the Veterans Administration to ramp up to address that. I don't know if that included funding directly to, for example, the state mm -hmm. departments or veterans organizations, but you're absolutely correct. The veterans service organizations many of you in this room, are already answering questions. And you're going to get a whole lot more. I'm going to find out, and I'll come back. Sure. Jackie. According to my reading on it, did they incorporate that, that piece of legislation into the FACT Act? Um, but I'm happy to you know, do more research about how the funding mechanism there and how it gets to the county. Before, if you haven't done it, I think all of you signed in, gave us your addresses and so forth. We'll come back at this. Uh, if not, I, 435 of us plus 100, well, let's see, a third of the senators are out doing what is known as campaigning. The election's coming. And all of us are doing things like this with veterans organization. I suspect, Nestor, that other people have asked this question around the nation. If it is not in the final bill, I would suspect that before this term is over, that that will be included, because you're absolutely right. There's no way the Veterans Administration will be able to ramp up the hiring. But you've got all these organizations out there, including this county and state organizations, that can do that, at least the initial process. We'll take that back, and we'll let all of you know. As I say, I'm reasonably sure that the House bill had it in it. As we say in the House, an old story. It takes an act of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I won't share it. So uh, maybe I will. John Dingle was the, was the dean of the Senate. He'd been there 50 years. Oh, yeah. I knew him back in the 90s when I was insurance commissioner. And I arrived on the floor, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. a newbie to the House. And he said, hey, John, come here, sit down. Yes, Mr. Dingle. He says, a couple of things you need to learn. What is it, Mr. Dingle? He said, first of all, my name is John. 
I said, well, so am I. He said, good, then you can remember. I'm John. I said, yes, Mr. Dingo. I said, come on, dude. You're not that slow a learner. And he said, do you know where you are? I said, yeah, I'm on the floor of the house. He said, that's right. Do you know who's on this side? I said, Democrats. He said, yes. You know who's on that side? Republicans said, no, no, that's the opposition. Do you know what's on the other side of this building? I said, the Senate. He said, no, no, that's the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> so he was right. That's what we have. Back and forth. The end result, hopefully, is good legislation. Questions? Any questions for him? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I just want to say one thing. Nestor did bring up the uh, the workload. As you guys know, here in Solano County, uh, we're short staffed, so um, the phones are ringing off the hook. I'm down three veteran service rep, but I am hiring. Uh, we have a, a list. Hopefully, it gets certified this week. Cross your fingers, uh, and then we'll be hiring up to help you out. <laughs> so ho hopefully, we'll be getting some of these excellent veterans in here to uh, to help you guys out. I'm really pro. Hiring veterans, so if you uh, hopefully you guys shot a couple of these great veterans to uh, to the interview process. Now we we're not like one of those online hiring services. I won't take ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> but your service, okay. A couple of people. Yes, yes ma'am. Where is your office? Uh, Six seventy five Texas Street. It's the county building, the main the main county building in Fairfield. But we also have a, uh, a rep out at uh, Travis Air Force Base at the uh, Airman Family Readiness Center on two on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, hopefully we'll have that full time after I uh, hire up. And we plan on having a representative out at Mayor Island in Vallejo. Uh, also, the, uh, the, the director of Mayor Island uh, gave us space out there. So hopefully we'll have a rep out there also. Okay. And you're hired. Okay. Uh, so if, if everybody doesn't know about that office, the Solano County Veteran Service Office, and I'll just toot that, the horn for that office, from Ted Pantillo, now Al Sims has that office. Per capita of veterans in the county, uh, that has been the most active of, of getting veterans benefits in all of California. Oh. So that office right there, the amazing reputation, and they need help. They've lost several of their uh, veteran service officers. So if you guys know of any young veterans and or any veterans period, sorry to say young, any veterans period uh, that, that are interested, uh, that is an amazing office to work for. And they've been doing an amazing job supporting us throughout the county for many years. Thank you, Al. I want to second that emotion about uh, about the office and about this community. You guys know it, we're a super friendly uh, military veteran community. I always tell people they're, they're, if you include the dependents, they're probably close to 100,000 of us in this county, so they actually respect us around here. So uh, it's a great place to work, and if you uh, know anybody who wants to work there, please shoot them a wish. Okay, Al. Thanks, sir. You're not finished. Oh. You're just going to sit there. No, you're sure. They're going to jump on you as soon as I give up the podium. They're going to do that. Uh, before we go to a and a I want to do something that uh, really I love to do. Uh, we started off here talking about uh, where you served and what period of time you served. Uh, one of the great tragedies, in my view, and I think America now recognizes it, uh, is the way in which the men and women that served in Vietnam were treated when they came home. Uh, it was awful. And we now understand that. Obviously, there was a lot of conflict going on within the United States and concern about the war. And many came home, not just quietly, but they came home to abuse. There were many different ways. Uh, what we've done, I would say what you've done, uh, the Vietnam veterans and others have done, is to, in, uh, to begin a process of recognizing uh, the Vietnam veterans. And it's a nationwide program in which Vietnam veterans are recognized um, with a certificate that thanks them for their service and a Vietnam pin of service. Um, and it just happened, I wasn't asking that I asked you to raise your hand. Uh, so this is a pin, it's a lapel pin. And uh, I want to recognize 
uh, those of you that are here that served uh, in Vietnam uh, and, uh, and came home uh, forgotten, at best forgotten, at worst abused. So if I could do that, if, let's do it. Tyler, what do we have? Tyler's a veteran. Uh, served five years, five years in the Army, and uh, what? Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> Marine Corps. Close enough. Calm <laughs> down. Calm down. <laughs> you don't want to start. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> okay, Tyler. Um, uh, this is uh, what we authored uh, in Congress. Uh, in the United States House of Representatives, I take great pleasure uh, in presenting the Vietnam Veteran Lapel Pin for your services in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, during the period November 1st, 1955 to May 15, 1975, your hard work and dedication have, given, have greatly contributed to the accomplishments of our nation's mission. And while your honorable service has helped ensure the security of our nation and the continued success of the armed forces of the United States of America. On behalf of a great foundation, thank you for your service. And we're, we're providing this to every Vietnam veteran we meet along the way. And so that's what we're gonna do together with APN. And- Nestor Legal. Nestor, put the camera down. <laughs> Tyler's gonna pick up the camera. <laughs> Nestor, no, no. show okay. Tyler how to use that. Okay. okay, very good. Let me take this pin out of here. There we go. That's the pin. And use the certificate. Did you record him? Yeah. He's normally not in the recording. He well, is he is now. now. <laughs> Thanks, Nestor. Thank uh, Nestor has an interesting piece of work that he's been working on, and this is the cemetery at Mare Island. Some of you may be familiar with that cemetery. It, uh, it's not an active cemetery. It hasn't been active for some time. In fact, it's a forgotten cemetery. But it goes back to the very, very early days of the uh, US Navy uh, at Mare Island. And uh, Nestor, you really made it. You made it happen. You you put together an organization there, and uh, you pushed it, pushed it until it finally got restored. And uh, Mike Thompson, who represent still represents uh, Mare Island and that part of Solano County, uh, pushed through legislation, and uh, we now have the uh, Battlefield Memorial uh, organization that is taking that on and. Uh, the hard work you've done to rehabilitate. Rehabilitate the cemetery uh, is recognized and now we have a mechanism to go on. And I suspect uh, you're gonna stay on top of the Battlefield Memorials uh, Commission and uh, see that they get the job done. So thank you so very much for that. Thank you, Sanjay. Some of the thanks to my fellow veterans. There you go. You have to Now, who else do we have here? Ted Mark. Ted? There you go. Hey. Ted, I know you were watching the routine here, so you, uh, <laughs> there's the lapel pin, and uh, there are the photographers. Thank you. There you go. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh. See, all of your fans. <laughs> See, he's having the same problem I have. How do you make these damn things work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. You got it. But I'm a Vietnam era veteran, not a Vietnam in, in Vietnam. Okay. That's okay. okay. That works too. And I also want to thank uh, the congressman. He's on the uh, Coast Guard and Marine Transportation Subcommittee, and for all the work he's done on that one. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, you. Well, my good fortune was. Uh, 
to follow uh, my predecessor, and I was assigned to the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. Wasn't asked if I wanted it, and then nobody wanted the Coast Guard Maritime, and so I took it. I love it. Absolutely love it, and uh, learned a great deal. Oh, Fitz. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Lawrence Stahl. Lawrence? Lawrence. Lawrence? Lawrence. So, where did you serve in Vietnam? Well, I'm also a Vietnam Air veteran. I wasn't in country. I, I went in March of '74 and uh, left in March, uh, May of '78, up at KI Sawyer Air Force Base in Upper Michigan. This is something that it doesn't make any difference where you served in the United States. You served in that period of war. You served, period, wherever it Thank was you. that you were located. Now put that pin right up here in that hand. Show the pin. Nicely done. <laughs> All right, look right here, folks. Three, two, one. Now we have this thing called airdrop. How many of you know how to airdrop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> And we'll make all the photos available. Don't lose that one. Okay. There you go. Got your hands full. Thank, thank you so very much. Thank Congratulations you. and thank you. Thank you. Gorlito. Okay, right here. Go ahead. Gorlito. Gorlito. Folks, look right here into the big camera. There we go. Three, two, one. Thank you. One more. Let's look to get his camera working. He's, he's learning. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thank you, Congressman. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Selenio, we're laughing. Here we go. How many hands do you have? Two. Okay, we'll make it work then. All right, look at the big camera. Three, two, one. Look at that. Yeah, of course. Oh, my camera. Oh, I got it. Oh, sorry. Take your time. This is going to be put back right there. Perfect. And the pin in that finger. All right, three, two, one. Thank you for your service. I do. <laughs> All right, look at the big camera. Three, two, one. Good. 
Congratulations and thank you, Barry. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Afterwards. 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 Well, afterwards is now. Uh, those of you that uh, we just uh, honored, why don't you come up and we'll do a group photo? There you go. Uh, well, be careful. Uh, okay. Uh, stand behind. I got one corner. My time police said, you're late getting to yourself in gear. I got to go. Thank you so very, very much. We really appreciate it all. You know this stuff. I'm going to hire you.